Good morning, everybody. Everybody have a happy holiday? Good. Um, I need your help with something. <clears throat> I oftentimes get feedback that when I'm delivering a lesson, I talk a little bit too fast. Sometimes I get carried away. So if you find that I'm talking faster than you can really keep up with, just feel free to raise your hand, and that will signal me to just take a deep breath and slow down a little bit. And also to my friends uh, watching on the internet and the DVD, if you do the same, we have the technical, <laughs> <coughs> the technical equipment now where I can actually see you. So if I talk too fast, just hold your hand in front of the screen. Um, let's test it out. Hold. No, put your hand in front of the screen. All of you. Okay, I see you. Okay. Well, um, do you ever have those times when you just fall into a mood of contemplation and reflection and you wonder what it's all about, and what life is all about? And if life isn't big enough and mind-boggling enough in and of itself, then there's you. Like, what are you all about? Why are you here? What's the purpose of your existence? What's the meaning of your life? In the grand, absolute reality of things, is there any reason for you being here at this time in this place? Or is it just coincidence or happenstance? I guess what I'm asking is, is there meaning to all of this, especially to you and the existence that you're living? Now, if you don't know for sure, or if you're unclear, in the next 20 minutes, we're going to find out. Because the next 20 minutes is all about you. I'm not talking to somebody next to you. I'm talking about you. Take my words, personalize them, and take it as the true meaning of why you're here and what your purpose is. So to begin with, you're a human being and you're a spiritual being. The human dimension is that of physicality. It's things that we can see and we can touch and we can smell and we can hear. And we live in this human dimension because trillions of atoms have come together and they have agreed or conspired, so to speak, to create this form that you call me, myself, or I. They all had to agree this is the shape and this is the form that we're going to create. Now, in order for the atoms to do this, they had to be social and they had to join together. They had to congregate, so to speak, into a greater community than their individuality. They had to join together in a greater community and this greater community was called a molecule. And so you have one great community of atoms creating a molecule, then you have another great one. And the molecules all have to be very social. They have to be in total harmony so that they can gather together with other molecules and create even a greater community called a cell. The cell has to be in total harmony with other cells so that it can gather together with the other cells and create many greater communities that turn out to be tissue and bone, blood and brain, muscle. And so all of these things come together, and it creates you. So here you are, a grand design. Now the point is, the atoms have to be in perfect harmony to create the molecule. The molecule has to be in perfect harmony to create the cell. The cell in perfect harmony to create your body. It's all made possible through harmony. Now I tell you this because there's two important points. One, that every single thing is part of a bigger group it doesn't stand on its own. It's part of a bigger group that it's in harmony with. And second thing, that is the nature, or that is the design of everything. So here you are. You're sitting here today on this earth. And as we look outward, we see that the earth is part of a grander community called a solar system. And in order for the earth to be part of this solar system, it has to be in perfect harmony with everything else in the solar system which means asteroids and comets and moons, a sun, and eight other planets. Now, here is where I just have to stop for a minute because some people would say, no, you're wrong, there's only seven other planets. <laughs> and that is because somebody decided to take Pluto and kick it out of the planet club. <laughs> for billions of years, Pluto was a planet, and then one morning, some smarty pants woke up and said, Pluto's no longer in the club. <laughs> and I, I get frustrated with this. I have to vent it to somebody. My wife won't listen to me talk about it anymore. <clears throat> but it bothers me, for, for, for God's sake. I mean, 
Pluto has a, one of the most famous dogs in the world named after it. <laughs> so I'm sticking with Pluto as a planet. And I've even started a club, PPP, People for Pluto as a Planet. <laughs> if you want to join, I'm digressing. So the Earth has to be part of this solar system, and everything has to be in harmony. The asteroids, the comets, the other planets, the moon, and the sun, all in harmony in the solar system in order for it to work, or else we wouldn't be here on Earth. The solar system then has to be in total harmony with other solar systems, so it can join together with them into a greater community yet again to create a galaxy. Then the galaxy has to be in total harmony with other galaxies to join together and create the universe. Now what I am saying, and the, the point is very simple, I don't mean this to be a science lesson, but what I'm saying is, as far inward as we go, we discover that everything is a part of something greater than itself and it's in total harmony with it. As far out as we go, we discover that everything is in total harmony with everything out there and part of a greater community, and here we are, human beings standing on the earth, and we're the only missing link in this stream of harmony. We just don't, we don't get it. And I'm not talking about you personally, but I'm talking about humanity primarily. We don't get it. We're in disharmony with each other. We're fighting each other. We're killing each other. We go to battle and wars and, 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 and do heinous crimes. We just don't get it. That harmony in unity is the only way that we can survive and progress. So that's our lesson. That's one of the reasons why we're here, to create a world that is in total harmony with everything else inside and out. So I'd like to talk a little bit now about the spiritual side of you. You're a human being. We've talked about your human existence going inward and going outward and on. Now let's talk about the spiritual aspect of you. And just for a moment, I'd like you to imagine where you were before you came to this earth. None of us know for sure, but let me tell you a story. It might be true, it might not, but the point of the story is the purpose for our existence. Let's just say before you came to this earth, you lived in another dimension, a spiritual dimension, very, very different from the way it is here. And in that dimension, you were a spirited soul, living with other spirited souls. And some of those spirited souls had taken a journey called Life on Earth. And they came back with incredible stories about what they experienced, about the senses that they had, about the things that they saw, about this physical world that they were able to, to live in. And as you heard the stories, it got to the point, the greatest desire that you had was to take the journey. You wanted to take the journey called life on earth. So you go to God. You say, God, I'd like to take this journey that I hear so much about. And God says, I am creating a world that's going to be based on unconditional love and harmony. And those that take the journey become co-creators with me. They do so for a purpose. They go there to help create unconditional love and harmony on the earth. But the earth is in an unfinished state right now. And if you go there, it's very easy to get confused. It's very easy to lose sight of my vision. It's very easy to lose sight of your purpose. You might wander into the darkness of false thoughts and misperceptions and actually work in ways that are disharmonious. Well, you've captured the vision. You're very excited to be a part of this, this, this grand creation called a harmonious earth. So I understand God. I want to go. And God said, the thing that will enable you to go on this journey is called a body. No two are alike. It'll be made especially for you. It'll be very unique. It'll have so many wonderful things that it can do. But there's no guarantees as to what kind of a body you might get. Some are big, some are small, some are strong, some are frail. Some look totally different than any other body. Well, you think about it for a moment and you realize that having a body of, of any type would be wonderful and that all bodies are equal in value. You know, being a spirited soul, that if you have a body, that will be the temple that you reside in. You'll love it, you'll care for it, you'll cherish it. So you tell God you're okay anytime. 
And God says, well, are you sure? As I said before, the earth is not finished. And if you go there, I can't guarantee you what kind of a person you're going to be. If you're a woman, you might face inequality. There might be people that don't value your talents and your skills. There might be doors that are closed to you simply because that's where the earth is at. If you're a minority, you might face bigotry, discriminations, and prejudices. People might be mean. If you're gay, you might be shunned, you might be outcast, you might even be attacked, simply because people don't understand. Well, you realize that the earth is in an unfinished state, and as a spirited soul, you agree to go anyway, because you want to help uncover the false perceptions and the discriminations that hold human beings back from becoming totally harmonious. So you say, yes, God, yes, I want to go. And God says, well, there's no guarantees. I can't guarantee the situations and circumstances that life's going to present you. If you're raised in an unloving environment, you might become unloving yourself. You might become unloving to yourself and to other people simply because you have been raised. If you're born in a time where there is war or there is conflict, you might take up a weapon and try to end another spirited soul's existence. Cut that one's journey short. You might face hardships. You might face huge problems. You might get hurt. You might feel pain. But you understand that's part of life. That's part of the creation process. That you will go and you will make progress. So you tell God that you face the situations and circumstances that come to you. You do the best you can with them. You move forward and you progress. You won't give up. And God says, are you sure you want to go? And you say, yes, yes, more than anything else. And so God says, okay. You can go. The vision is to be my co-creator and go to the earth and express harmony. You only have to do one little thing, God says. It's just be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to other people. Be kind to the earth. So, as a spirited soul, preparing to go on the journey called life and earth, we move to the heavenly door. And God says, this is where your journey begins. And this is where it'll end. And when you come back, you'll be more than you've ever been before because of the rich experiences you're going to have. We move out of the heavenly door and embark upon the path. And as we do so, God says, have faith in the vision. Have confidence in yourself. Have love in your heart. And don't forget to keep in touch. So here we are. Each of us in our own unique body. Living life on earth. The journey that we dream for. That we wanted to do so much. And sometimes we forget the vision. And sometimes we forget what we're here for. But every once in a while we remember it just makes so much sense. Yes, we're here to create a world of unconditional love and harmony. And we're here to do that together. And just as the atoms formed a greater community by becoming a molecule and the molecules becoming a cell and the earth becoming part of a solar system, we're here creating a greater community. You and I, a greater community call us humanity in unity as a living cell in the body of God. And if we within this cell can create a state of harmony, unconditional love and acceptance, we move out and we find other greater communities that are exactly the same. And we create this body of harmony that radiates throughout the universe. So, just think about that. And now with meditation, We'll take some time to keep in touch.